people will always try to talk you out of what they themselves couldn't do. It's not like they didn't hear the same instruction or they were not given the same opportunity. It's that they were not brave enough. And they will try and talk you out of it because how dare you have the courage? How dare you have the bravery? How dare you defy the odds? Like who are you? Who do you think you are to do what others failed to do? Who do you think you are to go beyond the limit to break out of the box? How dare you? I mean, how dare you? Because people want us to be the same. They want us to remain at the same level, to do things the same way, to make the same kind of decision. They want you to stay at the same level as them. Live your life the same way that they live theirs. You know, don't be too ambitious. Don't be, you know, too passionate. Don't don't be too creative. Don't be too innovative. Do it if, if you must, but just to a certain level. And if you dare cross that line, hmm, then they start to project their fears on you. They start to judge your decision. They start to look down upon the route you decided to take. Not because it's a bad route, no. Because they never had the courage to do it when they were opportuned to do so. And so they cast this shadow on you. They try to suppress you. They try to depress you where they should actually applaud you. They'll go for you using every angle possible. If they don't get you with your social status, they will get you with your role, either as a parent, as a sibling, as a partner, as a daughter, as whatever they can get you as. And if they don't get you there, they're going to attack your sanity and your ability to think rationally. Um, and all of this is because you are doing what nobody had the guts to do. You are doing what they themselves could not do. And therefore, they're going to try and, you know, project their fears onto you. Project whatever limitations that stopped them onto you. Project whatever it was that stood in the way of their own ability to actually go ahead and do it onto you. So they're going to give you, you know, direct examples of why they couldn't do it and expect you to use the same crutch. You see, what you are doing is not ordinary. You are breaking generational curses and you cannot break a generational curse without confronting it face to face, head on. You're going to be faced with the same difficult decisions that those before you were faced with and they failed. You're going to be faced with the same challenges, the same difficulties, the same diagnosis. But for you to say that I have conquered, I have made it, I have overcome, I am the one that defied the odds, then you're going to have to face it head on. And for everyone else looking at you, they're like, how dare you? How dare she? How dare he? What about him does he think, does she think is different for them to even attempt this? I mean, imagine the kind of opposition that Abraham must have faced to leave his family, to leave his home. You can just imagine people cross-questioning him like, Abraham, did you really hear God? Did he really say you have to leave your family? There's so many people that God called. There's so many people that God is using. There's so many people that God, you know, has separated to himself that are still with their families, that are still living in their homelands. Are you sure this is what God told you? Why would they bring up questions that directly force you or influence you to defy the instruction that you explicitly heard from your God? Why can they not just support what God has told you to do, whether they understand it or not? It's not at their expense anyways, and yet they feel the need to limit you or to, to discourage you. Why? Because it's something that they couldn't do. And so Abraham, you know, eventually takes Lot with him. 
right? Because at least I'm not going alone. Um, at least there will be someone from home. You know, at least it will ease the tension. You know, at least it will, you know, calm people's blood pressures a little bit. But what happens when he goes with Lot? They can't live together. Why? When God separated Abraham, he knew that I need you to be alone for what I need you to do. Because where you are surrounded by other people who don't have the same vision, who I have not given them that vision, who I have not given them the instruction, who I have not spoken to, whom I have not called or anointed or separated for this purpose, they are going to, you know, dilute my voice. They are going to influence you negatively and they are going to suppress my instructions and they're going to limit you. And so eventually, Lot and Abraham end up going their separate ways as they should have in the beginning. (laughs) Why? Because not everybody that is with you has to go with you. Some people are only there for a season. Some people are only there to accomplish a specific purpose and that's it. Some people are there, you know, for a while, not for forever. This whole forever thing needs to be rethought and relooked and re-understood because there are some people that cannot go to where you need to go because what you will need to do will need you to go alone and also is because God wants to strengthen your faith there are certain level of callings or there are certain seats that if you occupy them your level of faith cannot be average because if you are going to serve in a specific level or a specific rank you need to have utmost trust and faith in God to be able to do the impossible when he says do it why do you need to go alone because first and foremost God's instructions when they are sincere and when they have to do with a calling they are scary because they are usually you know making the impossible possible it's God leading you to places that no one has ever gone it's God leading you to do things that no one has ever done and so at that point it is of utmost importance for you to be like this with God. You have to be one with God and you have to listen. You have to be sensitive to his move. You have to be discerning. Everything around you have to be silenced and it's not an easy path to walk. And because of its, you know, unknown nature and because of it being so different, because of it being so out of your comfort zone, out of the norm, it needs you not to have people that are afraid around you. And so unfortunately, you're going to have to do this by yourself. You're going to have to go alone because the vision that God has shown you, the instruction that God has given you is so big (laughs) that no one else is going to believe you anyways. Um, The few that say they do believe still will believe to a certain extent because they're only hearing about it. God did not actually show it to them. It's only you who really knows what God has instructed you to do. It's only you who knows where God has directed you to go. So you're going to have to go alone. Yes, it's going to be scary. It's going to be a new path. You're not going to know what you're doing or where you're going um, half the time. In fact, you won't even know whether you're coming or you're going. But go anyways, as long as you go with God. It's his opinion that matters because he's the only one who knows the way. He is the way. There is no other way besides him. Between you and what you need to do, all you need is to walk with God. And you have to understand that there are some things that don't need advice. If God has given you an instruction, if God has called you to himself, you need to just answer him who has called you. Don't ask anyone for their opinion. Don't ask anyone for their advice. Don't ask anyone for guidance. Because none of them have been where God is taking you. None of them have done what God wants you to do. God is doing a new thing. Something that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has perceived. And so you cannot rely on the opinion of men. You cannot rely on the guidance of men. And so yes, by all means, do it without talking to anyone about it. As long as you are sure that you have heard God. As long as you are certain that you know what God has instructed you to do, then what are you waiting for? Do it. Go. I know it's going to be scary. I know it's going to feel lonely, but that is the process that you need to go through.